Hey, 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 you guys, how's it going? It's Clary Berry here today to bring to you a quick divine feminine reading. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, it is the weekend, so I'm definitely doing better. I needed a break. Big, 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 busy season this work at, this week at work, excuse me. <laughs> Anyways, this is a divine feminine reading, okay? This could be for the divine feminine inside of the relationship or inside of you. We each have both sides inside of ourselves, so it's important to turn this stuff around on yourself, okay? We have a new romantic cycles begins. Do you know how often we have been getting this card? All of us are starting new cycles, I think in a lot of areas of our life, but especially a lot of us are going through them in relationships. And it's a deeper than just relationships because it's into our relationship with ourself, with the universe, with God, however you wanna say it. Okay, but that really greatly, we have to understand every single relationship we ever will have is based off of your relationship with yourself and with your higher power. That's just how it is. Can't change it. <laughs> Trust the creative spark you're feeling and express it through written stories that inspire and enlighten. Isn't this such a fall card like coming up on this Virgo fall energy here in the Northern Hemisphere? Oh, just it's like screaming fall to me. Goodness, which I'm ready for. And I'm ready for this Virgo, this Virgo energy. In fact, I've got junk luggers coming to pick up a bunch of junk today. I'm gonna get it cleared out, make some new spaces. Let's see what the underlying, overlying energy here is. Okay, Divine Feminine is so on fire about this relationship. She's really using the relationship. I love to see this because this is exactly what needs to happen. She's using the relationship to inspire her in ways to be stronger to be a better person, to be a better leader, to shine her light, his or her light better. This is our focus. This is our pull. This is our passion. This is our Mars in Aries energy where we are wanting to do, you know, some kind of independent action here. But with you, I'm getting like you're picking up on the message that not only do we need to do independent work, which literally probably is your shadow work, is your inner child healing work, but also, again, things that you do in your life to help people. Work that you do to help other people feel stronger, feel better, heal, all of these things. They're so important right now. And here, let me tell you, it is good for your relationship to be off in this Mars and Aries energy, off in this doing independent activity. It's like certain times than others, there are times where it's not good to be like codependent in any way, shape or form. And this is not like the best thing you can do for your relationship is to focus on yourself. Again, how you're shining your light, what you're doing, and really take a big leap and a jump into the inner child healing, all of the subconscious. It's a whole new world out there when you are connected, when you actually are working with your subconscious rather than working against it. It's a whole new world. And it can seem kind of scary before you take the leap, you know? But it's not, it's not, it's not. It's just really, I'm getting the, uh, before the leap, you know, that's, that's the worst part is before you jump before you take the leap. You're like, oh, I've got all this work to do. And you know, it sounds so big. Oh, get this program, do all this work, all this work. You don't wanna do work, not on the weekends, not when you're feeling down, not when you just want your person. Yes, you do, you know, you need to start into it. It's, it's going to be one of those things that you do and you're like, oh, that was awesome. Let me do that again. You know, like, like just like taking a leap off a cliff, literally into water. So scary at first. A lot of people are like, oh, they take half the day. I used to do that on the diving board as a kid. Take half the day to get up the courage just to go off the high dive. And then the day's over. And then you can't, you can't go down the high dive anymore because it's time to go. And that's all you literally want to do. That is your energy here with going deep into the subconscious, into this work. I feel like it's like you're, you're not wanting to do it at first. But then as soon as you do it, you're going to be like, why the hell didn't I do this before? Okay, we're growing up, okay? Our actions here are getting better. We're switching our, a lot of our actions in our life. Okay, we're wanting to do that. We're getting, we literally, I mean, to have two 
freaking strength cards come up here on a divine feminine reading. Does this not just epitomize? And this is overlying in underlying. This epitomizes everything we've been talking about. How long have we been talking about the strength card? You guys, this is literally, I'm getting chills right now. This applies to me too, as my own divine feminine. This new cycle is completely, I don't want to say it's completely upon you, but divine feminine does carry, again, it's carry, It's kind of like carrying a big burden in one way, but in the other way, it's this wonderful opportunity that really isn't even that difficult. It just seems hard, okay? You have got to stand up for yourself in this relationship. And if that, if, if this is abusive in any way, shape or form, even, even to the point of like neglectful and just emotional abuse, it's not your twin flame. But otherwise, if you're feeling this strong pull towards this person, you are, you're really wanting to focus here and jump in with both feet into getting better. Getting better includes better and stronger boundaries, sticking to them more often making sure I'm being dignified in any situation. It doesn't matter. Keep that dignity above all else because if your person is so great here, you know, and you want to be with them so badly, they need that, you know, it's like you need to have your equals. If they're so badass, that automatically makes you so badass. So don't have that doubt. Don't have that. Don't let that person, oh, your, your person's so great, makes you feel any less than. You are strong. You are important. And this is huge leadership energy into this relationship and into where it's going. So it's kind of like, suck it up, put your big girl britches on, and we are going to make this happen. And the way that we're going to make this happen again is by focusing on ourselves and shining our own lights, focusing on our passions, purposefully working on these, these actions, you know, that we're trying to do. We're trying to make stuff happen. We're trying to help people, We're trying to be the movers and the shakers, the new leaders of the world. This inadvertently affects your relationship. And this is very coming through very strong and very clear. So please do not just turn this video off and go back to obsessing about your person and why they're not calling you. And, oh, well, now I'm just going to have to, you know, find somebody else and da, 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 da. Okay. You can run around and play those games with yourself because those, you're playing games with yourself. Okay. So what's going on, you know, is that this relate this spiritual energy is changing us from the inside out. You know, we're we're recognizing what we deserve more and that's, you know, we're recognizing who we truly are and that's why we're getting that courage to raise up as far as, you know, what we're going to allow as far as dignity and all of this goes. You have to remember all change begins within. So you have to, if you want to change this relationship for the better. You've got to, right now is the time to still go within and change. Yes, change your home. Yes, change your habits. Change your routines. Get better and not just in this outer realm, but also in a spiritual sense as well. And just know that it is all connected. True peace and true wealth, not just like, you know, being rich, because everybody knows being rich, you know, comes with problems, right? But if you want to be truly wealthy, you know, it, it's about taking that spiritual side, taking these underlying views, you know, underlying overlying views, which are already here. You're, you're started off, you know, on the right foot here and any work that you've already done has led you to your understanding and your situation where you're at right now and your understanding here, all of it, all of it, your, all of your energy, your actions, the way that you wake up and decide to live your life every day right now is hugely powerful. Huge. Hopefully you've been letting go of some ego, of some false beliefs, thoughts, and expectations. These are the things we need to clean out, especially in Virgo season. Change, change, change. Okay, we keep getting, we get the page and we get the prince. Um, these are, you know, changing your life purpose changing everything you thought you knew, you know, used to look differently, used to think differently, act differently. Who was I? I'm totally different person now. That's how you're going to feel. Okay. That is how you, you might feel, you might identify with that already. Okay. So I'm just going to clarify that once. Okay. So yeah, very, very focused on 
some of the outer stuff as well, you know, changing your home, changing your house. I'm not even coming through that this is super, you know, shallow and in the way, although it may be a little bit work, I feel like might be getting in the way. Like your outer work might be getting in the way of your inner work, which is hugely common in this society because we really only value the yawn, you know, the outer work. But this is kind of taking that outer work and saying, you know what, I'm gonna change this, I'm gonna get better in this way, and then we're gonna be able to move on to a new cycle. So I always say there's there comes a point where, you know, uh, pentacles and earth energy is no longer, it's, it's not just mundane, it's not just shallow. That's like saying our bodies are just sacks, you know, for this flesh. No, our bodies are spiritual in themselves. We just don't know it, okay? And that's kind of the same thing as our energy with our life. It's it's all spiritual and it can be, and it can be very powerful if you let it be, okay? But again, that first step, it's it's inventory control. It's just looking at what you have, looking at, you know, what, why am I, why do I have this here? You know, is that the right spot for that? No, actually when I use that, I'm over there. So maybe I should put it by where I use it. It's being logical. It's being, it's putting, setting yourself up to have yourself in the best position, you know, so that when it's time, when it's crunch time, when you're trying to make things happen, trying to be this great leader, you know, that things are where they want to be. They're where they're in the right spot. And get, guys, this includes your baggage, okay? This is not just your things in your house, but this is also your baggage. Doing the work, doing the work long-term, very, very important, okay? You feel like your person is home, okay? You feel like your person is home and, okay, this is interesting because it's such a, there's such a deep part of you that when they shine their light doing something, it reflects on you. And this is just, again, this is a great understanding of how this works, how this twin flame energy works. You know, when they're dealing with something you may not even realize they're dealing with, a lot of times it's the same thing or a common theme that you're going through as well, okay? You see your person maybe as stuck in the past, you know, not wanting to move on, um, but like you want to move on with them, okay? But there's a, there's a part of you that is somewhat seeing them as very dogmatic, very uh, staunch, almost very stern, very unwavering, unflexible, okay? They may have, so I'm getting like some mercury energy in their charts, maybe some of this, um, earth okay i believe this is the virgo card again coming up and there's just a lot of mercury here a lot of ideas flowing a lot of new ideas kind of opening up it's like you know your person's open-minded but in a way you also feel like they're very rigid which keep in mind you guys when we're judging people always turn that around on yourself. If you're judging your person for being too rigid and not open-minded enough right now, how are you doing that same thing? Okay? If you're if you're if you're saying, "Oh, they're they're only focused on one thing right now. If they're only focused on one thing, how are you only focused on one thing? How do you expect them to only be focused on one thing?" And that's getting down into the shadow work, which again, really 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 important. Okay? So <coughs> So obviously tons of passion going on within the relationship. You are again recognizing there is a spiritual undercurrent, you know, there's a spiritual meaning to this relationship that is so important. Doing the work is making you better. It's, it's helping you to be able to react, respond, and just act in the right way, you know, to attract certain things to you. Okay. This is like, also big 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 change okay at some point you know the tower here this is revelation this is truth shining and yes it may not feel it may not feel right all the time okay it may not feel right all the time but we have to see the truth and even if it hurts we have to we have to see our truth but we also have to share our truth okay so you might, again, we're kind of seeing this relationship as something that is set up to open our eyes, okay? And, and, and it is, okay? It's like when your crown falls, you know, then you're able to go within. Are you manifesting 
what you think you have to do in life or are you manifesting what you really want? Are you manifesting what you're afraid of happening or are you manifesting what you really want? Okay, we are, there's something that we're really coming to terms with this spiritual work. Okay, this is our, you know, our philosophies of life. This is our wisdom. This is our connection, you know, to the spiritual side through our works. You know, I know the Bible talks about this all the time. You know, it's not just, you know, enough to believe, you know, you need to get out there and do good in the world. You can't just hoard your money. You know, Jesus was very clear about that. You cannot just hoard your money and not help out your neighbors. You you love God first, then you love your neighbors as yourself. And that is, that's the deal. That's that action piece. Just an example. Your actions right now, again, even within your relationship, you're showing the universe who you are and literally what you deserve. So do not accept crumbs. Do not accept crumbs or you will have a tower moment. Do not do the same things. Do not succumb. This is succumbing to the passion without having everything else lined up. Succumbing to the passionate side of your relationship without bringing in that spiritual side, without bringing in that deeper side, that more, you know, that philosophical side, that contemplative side, that logical side, analytical, even emotional. It's just, you know, just being about passion is not going to work right now. And it's hard because I know damn good and well that the passion between two twin flames is freaking hot. Hot, 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 hot. But that's why sometimes it doesn't help. You know, the passion can actually work against you, lead you to tower moments because you're not looking at the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter is so important right now. Are we doing things that we don't want to do out of habit or out of, you know, expectation or out of what society tells us to do? Are we operating out of fear? It's either fear or love, guys. There's really not a lot else really even out there. You know, we think hate is the opposite of love. No. Fear causes so many negative things. Okay? And if you have fear, and then, I mean, if you're working out of fear, you don't work, don't do your work by what you, by running away from what you want. You do your work by going within. Listening to your actual feelings. Instead of just, you know, oh, there's knee-jerk reactions. A lot of times we don't, we don't even feel our feelings fully. We just have these knee-jerk reactions. Arrgh. Okay, now our feelings have been somewhat released in a way, but we still don't go back and process them. We just go back to work. <laughs> we do. This is so true. We do. But if you're going to actually sit with your emotions, actually sit actually deal with it actually use it to guide you again do the shadow work i have a whole shadow work playlist here on youtube it is totally free and then i also have the description box below i have my program available it goes through the holistic law of attraction the shadow work and the inner child healing to get you into union with your person i do have personal readings available in fact i have not taken them off sale i'm gonna go ahead and extend the sale until sunday just because i'm feeling generous and I know this is a really critical time. You know, for a lot of people, this is make it or break it. This is make it or break it, but don't get desperate because what you want, if this is your true twin flame, you don't need to force it. You don't need to figure it out. You just need to do the work and go within and it will manifest itself to you, okay? And if it's not, a, if it's not the right flame and you do the work, it'll manifest itself out of your life so that your true twin flame can come into your life. So this has nothing to do with external, oh, events, oh, why hasn't, you know, the universe brought me my person, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, why haven't they brought my person closely as I want? This is all up to you. This is your choice. Shallowness, shallowness will not, not be working. This is totally spiritual. This is getting more in depth with the spiritual aspect of our relationship. And also don't forget about that creative spark. This Mars and Aries is huge. And again, it's that concept of always whenever you look at your person and they're doing something you love, that turns people on even more, especially the masculines. The masculines love, especially the way that, you know, men in general and society have been, um, I'm not saying all masculines are men, obviously, but 
men in our society and masculines in general have been, you know, conditioned to just look for any source of, you know, weakness or um, uh, what's the word? clinginess, you know, in a divine feminine. And, and whenever divine feminine is taking that and flipping it around and saying, you know what, I'm going to focus on my own damn self. I'm going to work on my own passions and I'm going to help this world. You can't even imagine how that is the exact opposite of clinginess. Clinginess turns the masculine off. But when you're focused on what you love, doing what you do, you know, the best every day, talent comes through you know all of this stuff this passion shines and it lights you up when you're doing especially your true passion so this is all about finding out who we are finding out what our true creative works are and that is going to lead you into your relationship into this new into this new cycle okay very very clear very very in uh, alignment with the other things that we have been talking about lately much love, many blessings, take care, and I'll talk to you guys so soon. Don't forget, thanks um, again for all the likes, shares, subscribes, comments, and you can find me all over social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Tumblr, Pinterest, etc. Bye, guys. Thanks.